Hello, welcome. My name is Nilesh Kule. With this video, I am starting a series which is called as a cloud native ninja. Some time back, I did a poll on Twitter asking my followers if I were to do a series on building cloud native applications, what would they like to call it? And most of the people voted in favor of cloud native ninja. So with this series, I'm going to talk about how to start building cloud native applications and how to deploy them on cloud and how to monitor them. So let's get started. Before we talk about cloud native applications, let's try to understand what is cloud computing and what are cloud native applications, starting with cloud providers. If we do a quick search on which are the top 10 cloud providers in 2023, this is what I came up with. Uh, we talk about the major public cloud providers like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, which are quite common. We also have others like Salesforce, which is related to the uh, CRM. We have Dell, IBM, DigitalOcean, which is one of the biggest provider of cloud services. There is also Adobe and Dropbox. So it's not just related to the public clouds like AWS, Azure. We also have cloud providers which are related to specific industries and sectors like Adobe, which is for creative tools and Dropbox, which is for file sharing. Some of the key highlights why cloud has become quite popular over the last 10, 15 years is obviously the cost. The money savings by moving things to cloud is huge. One of the biggest drivers for organizations moving to cloud is to optimize their cost. Uh, it is quite easy to provision software and hardware on cloud and the speed at which we can provision these resources also helps in terms of improving the business agility. Think of situations where 10 years back if we were to build a new server it used to take us months. I've been in organization where it has taken three to six months to request for the required hardware then to install the software on that and then to provision all the required monitoring and other tools. By the time the application team could use this, it could take months from the day they start requesting for resources. When it comes to cloud, it's all about self-service and uh, pay as you go. Uh, in the traditional way, again, once we buy the hardware, we are like locked in for a certain period of time. We can't just uh, throw that out and we can, can't replace it to, let's say, a better performing uh, VMs or better performing resources. So one of the biggest advantage again is this speed with which we can provision the resources and the speed with which we can change it. A classic example is when you start your application, if you have very few number of users, you can start with minimal number of servers and as the resource usage or as your user group increases, as your number of uh, users using the application increases based on the capacity, we can increase the hardware as well as software resources on cloud. It's not so easy on the on-premise world. Scalability again is another factor where based on different parameters, we can scale the resources. Now in cloud, we have different types of resources available. Like for example, if we talk about the virtual machines, we have virtual machines which are optimized for CPU consumptions, those which are optimized for compute, those which are optimized for memory. We have resources or virtual machines using GPUs, for example. Think of doing that on on-premise. It's simply not possible to do these things so quickly. Also, the innovation which is there on the cloud is uh, improving and it's changing very fast. So today, if we start an application and six months down the line, if we realize that there is a better version of cloud optimized, let's say operating system, say for example, Linux, Every cloud provider nowadays has their own flavor of Linux, which they optimize for their cloud. We can easily shift from an older version of Linux to this cloud optimized version in the cloud environment. Security is another feature why cloud is very popular. Most of the cloud providers, they have all the industry standard security uh, certificates applicable to them in order to attract customers. So they help us to allow create new policies, they use technologies like AI to make sure that security is one of the topmost priority for the cloud providers as well as the organizations who are using the services provided by cloud. So we get things like the data security, infrastructure security, all these things built in into the cloud. 
we don't have to think of that it comes bundled along with the other cloud services and the last one is obviously the reliability cloud is built for scale and by means of scaling it also provides us things around availability and disaster recovery we can have uh, multi-site operations set up on cloud very easily we can have uh, global organizations if we are uh, working across let's say different continents it also makes it easier to have the data replicated across different geographies subject to the uh, in-country uh, requirements compliance and regulatory requirements but these are some of the reasons or the key factors which are affecting the cloud adoption and which are responsible for making more and more organizations move towards cloud and we have seen uh, that the cloud adoption has been increasing year on uh, year on year basis so when we talk about cloud native applications specifically these are applications which are built for multi cloud scenarios it just doesn't mean that these applications are only working in the public cloud they are built for multi cloud scenarios we can build applications and deploy applications in multi cloud as well as hybrid cloud scenarios some of the things which makes these things possible is obviously the cloud computing these applications are built to take advantage of the innovations in cloud computing things like serverless things like uh, databases which are optimized for cloud the other services like the key vaults or the way we manage secrets these kind of things they have improved quite a lot over a period of time as the cloud adoption has increased and they make building cloud native applications very easy uh, along with the uh, cloud computing uh, related innovations there is also innovation in the space of infrastructure as i said earlier there is this uh, cloud optimized version of different operating systems for each cloud that is just one part there is also a lot of innovation happening in terms of the infrastructure itself uh, things like the infrastructure as code the apis which are provided by cloud providers they make it very easy to provision the resources to manage the resources to monitor the resources on cloud scaling is quite easy we can have applications built which scale based on let's say resource usage they can scale based on things like uh, events we can use messaging we can use things like kafka or redis or rabbitmq to scale the number of uh, instances of our application so different kinds of workloads they can scale based on different matrix and cloud native applications they are also based on different providers so not just the public cloud we have also facilities where private cloud providers like openshift there is a pivotal cloud foundry VMware who provide their own cloud services which can be deployed on premise so cloud native applications are those applications which are easy to build and deploy to any of these scenarios it can be private cloud it can be public cloud it can be multi cloud hybrid cloud it can run on the data center of the organization or it can even run on the edge so in uh, with this adoption there is also different industries and different players who are trying to uh, jump onto this bandwagon related to the cloud native applications and cloud in general that is where the cloud native computing foundation or cncf comes into the picture in order to standardize things and make it easier for people to adopt cloud native technologies cncf was founded in 2015 about 8 years ago and it's part of the non profit organization related to linux foundation the aim with which cncf started is to have open source products and make it vendor neutral for projects like kubernetes prometheus which are quite popular to host it in cloud native environment or to host it as part of cncf organization and to make cloud native universal and sustainable some of the benefits we get by doing this is the organizations they can build and run scalable applications on modern day cloud like dynamic environments such as public private hybrid clouds it also standardizes things like uh, containers service meshes microservices immutable infrastructure and declarative apis by making this a standard across different providers it makes it easier to integrate different service providers and different tools technologies and it also enables us to build loosely coupled systems which are more resilient which are highly observable which are manageable and this helps in adopting cloud technologies
Along with this, the robust automation also plays a very key part in making changes which are quite frequent and predictable with minimum toil. We have tools nowadays which are use things like GitOps, uh, there is DevOps tools which enable very high frequent releases as compared to the old days where we had to wait for months and even years to make uh, upgrades to our software. So uh, with this, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, we get a lot of tools and technologies. So let me switch to the browser and show some of the things that Cloud Native Computing Foundation has to offer. So let's start by looking first at the CNCF itself. Uh, what is CNCF? CNCF is it's an organization which has a lot of members, contributors, end users. They have uh, various projects which uh, go through different phases like uh, incubation, sandbox, they graduate to the uh, projects which are accepted as part of CNCF projects. And uh, they are also standardizing all these things. So we can look at the charter and other things related to CNCF. They also host various events in order to make it easier for applications and for organizations to uh, incorporate cloud native technologies. Before we move on to CNCF, I would also like to show some of the things uh, regarding what I talked earlier about cloud native applications. So if we talk about cloud native applications and we do a quick search, everybody will have their different opinion. So here I have some links open. Uh, these are like the technology site like Tech Target. They talk about what are cloud native applications, what are the features and things like that. Microsoft has its own uh, set of resources. VMware has its own set of resources. AWS has things around cloud native development. And like this, uh, different sectors like the CICD providers or uh, the source code providers, everyone has their views and opinion about cloud native and cloud computing. So let's get back to the CNCF and look at some of the things which can be used uh, as part of our onboarding journey. There is this uh, landscape which is provided by CNCF. CNCF is quite huge in terms of different things it tries to address. So it looks at databases, streaming and messaging platforms, applications, continuous integration, the platforms which are specific and various other things. And under each of these category, there are different projects which, as I mentioned earlier, they go through different cycles of incubation, then going through the adoption phases. And CNCF publishes this as an interactive map. We can look at this and we can pick and choose from these different projects which we want to use for our uh, cloud native journey. There is also this trail map which is provided by CNCF uh, for the applications or organizations to get started. If you are new to cloud native and you want to focus on certain projects, we can look at this cloud native trail map, which talks about different things like containerization, CICD, orchestration, observability, and some of the main projects under each of that category. So if you are new and you want to start your cloud native journey, I recommend that you have a look at these CNCF resources. So let's get back to the uh, slides and see what are the key features of cloud native applications. So as I was going through those different uh, links, we saw that every uh, people or every organization has their own view about cloud native applications. If I were to summarize what are the key features of cloud native applications, it would be uh, starting with microservices. Most of the cloud native applications, they are built as microservices as compared to the old ways where we had monolithic applications containing thousands and thousands of lines of code which was very difficult to maintain, which was difficult to deploy, which was difficult to scale. Modern day applications are built as a purpose driven modular microservices and it makes it easier for us to manage this, to deploy them, to scale them based on different needs. We also make use of containerization. Uh, Docker has been a pioneer in this since the release of Docker in around 2014, about 10 years back. Uh, it has really made developing applications very easy. 
Containers are lightweight by nature. We don't have things which are not required for running the application on containers. Things like utilities, uh, the when we have like say a Linux version, it comes with a lot of built-in tools. But when we run things in production, we don't need all those tools. So what containers tries to do is, it tries to reduce the footprint of the different tools and packages which are there on the uh, container package and they make it self-contained. So only the things which are required for running the application in production are part of the container image and it makes them very lightweight. Uh, Docker is not just the only one. Docker was the pioneer, but now it has been open source and we have something called as Open Container Initiative or OCI, uh, which provides again the interfaces and the guidance around how containers should be built and how they should be deployed. So there are other providers which can be used as an alternative to Docker. Once we have this, we also use things like uh, APIs. Uh, historically, again, we used to do integration using batch processing, then proprietary file formats were used to exchange information between different organizations. But nowadays we have open standards using which the API uh, integration is becoming quite easy. Most of the organizations, they use these open standards like uh, open APIs for banking. Uh, there are financial services which use their own standards for different APIs and different industry sectors, they have their own standard. So it makes it easier for integrating different parts of the applications using APIs since they follow the open standards. Uh, there is also resiliency. When we talk about cloud, resiliency is built into the cloud. We have things like uh, when the VMs go down, the cloud provider themselves, they have resiliency mechanism built in on top of that. Uh, the customers, they can have their own resilient things by having multiple copies of the application. We can build things around uh, the Azure application. We can replicate across geographies. We can have applications which are deployed in multiple geographies, multiple data centers. All these things make our application very resilient uh, when we talk about cloud native. Scalability is one of the, again, biggest factors. As I said earlier, we don't have to uh, scale the application right from day one. We can start with smaller resources and then we can optimize it for uh, bigger scale. Serverless also plays a very important role here. Nowadays, we don't have to rely on pre-provisioned resources. We can have our application respond to events and we can use serverless things where uh, even things like databases can now be run in serverless mode, not just the functions which is called as a function as a service or fast but other resources also are now capable of running in serverless mode and that is again a key factor which is uh, helping cloud native applications become more and more popular and last but not the least automation plays a very important role it's not to say that we didn't have automation in the traditional applications CICD has been around for quite a while uh, we had things like the continuous integration happening using, uh, let's say Jenkins, we had automation tools like Chef, Puppet in the past. But uh, with infrastructure as code, what has happened is, there is a lot of things which have moved from being manual to uh, moving as a source of truth in different source control repositories, like uh, Git based repositories. We have things like GitOps now, which makes it even easier for us to manage not just the application code, but also the infrastructure as part of our code base. So automation plays a very important role and every cloud provider and every vendor, they have their own ways. Like Azure, for example, has Bicep or Azure Resource Manager, AWS has CloudFormation, there is Terraform, and everyone has a way by which we can uh, create infrastructure as a code and we can make it easier to manage this by automation. So these are some of the core features which make cloud native applications very easy to build and uh, these are the salient features or important features required for building modern day cloud native applications. If we compare this with the traditional enterprise applications, uh, we can say we can have cloud native applications built in a very predictable manner. We can have release cycles which are uh, very, very predictable by using all these tools that we talked about or different methodology. Uh, when we talk about the enterprise apps, the traditional ones, they can be un unpredictable. They can have 
uh, very long release cycles. They can be dependent on one another. It can be difficult to uh, push changes very easily because of the amount of testing required, because of the coordination required between different uh, teams. So uh, that is one of the downside of using uh, the traditional apps. The next benefit or the comparison factor is abstraction of the underlying operating system. If we look at the modern day applications where we use platform as a service or we use containers as a way of deploying our application, we don't really rely on the underlying operating system. We abstract it. Uh, let's take an example of platform as a service or serverless. Uh, we just say what kind of resources are required, whether we are going to deploy a Java application or whether we are going to deploy a Go application uh, and what kind of web server do we need. We don't know whether that underlying web server is deployed on a Windows OS or it is running on Linux. That is all abstracted from us as an end user. Whereas in traditional application, uh, these applications are tightly bound to the underlying operating system. And if we have to move the application from one OS to another, it can be quite a cumbersome task to move it from, let's say, uh, if something is built in .NET and we have to deploy it on a Linux server, uh, it could take quite a substantial amount of effort to convert it to .NET Core and run it on a Linux based server. The third thing is about the right sizing. Uh, I keep stressing this point about having scalability and right sizing in case of cloud native application. Cloud makes it really, really easy to have the right capacity at the right time. We don't have to think about what will be our needs three years down the line or five years down the line. As compared to traditional apps where when we provision the resources, we had to provision keeping in mind all these needs about uh, the resource utilization one year down, two years down, or three years down the line, because once those resources were provisioned, we were locked in with those resources. Cloud makes it very easy by having pay-as-you-go model to have the right size resources at the right amount of time. Storage, for example, I've been in organization where to add a certain amount of storage, it took three months, whereas on a cloud environment, it could be a matter of minutes to add additional storage for what we have currently provisioned. The next factor is collaboration. Most of the days now, uh, the applications are built using Agile technologies. We follow one form or the other of Agile and collaboration is a key. Uh, whereas in case of traditional apps, these were built in siloed uh, situations where there were separate teams for building the application, there was separate team for development, there was separate team for testing, uh, even uh, deployment. The servers and the actual uh, target environment could be managed by a completely different team. And it took a lot of effort to deploy an application which was developed and a lot of handovers were required when it moved from one team to the other. Whereas nowadays, this is not the practice so much. Most organizations have moved to agile and collaboration is the key. Next thing about uh, continuous delivery. Uh, we have CI CD tools nowadays. It's a common practice to have continuous integration and continuous delivery as part of the deployment pipeline, delivery and deployment pipeline, I would say. Uh, we no longer have waterfall mode of deployment. If somebody is still using it, they probably need to rethink about their strategy and move to a continuous delivery mechanism. Automated scalability, this is again a feature which is built into cloud. Uh, it is at the all levels that we have scalability built in into the cloud, starting with uh, if we are using infrastructure as a service, uh, we have automation there where we can build uh, things around the resource usage. We can scale resources based on let's say CPU or memory. We can also scale resources on specific times if let's say we know uh, there is a specific event like a Chinese New Year or Deepavali or Christmas happening and we need more resources during that particular period of time. We can have things automatically scaled during those times and modern day orchestration platforms like Kubernetes, they have different ways in which we can scale. Serverless also plays a key role in terms of uh, automating the scalability part. Uh, we pay for the resources only when they are required and serverless makes it easy for us in terms of uh, billing those resources. 
So we don't have to really rely on automated scaling. And uh, like the traditional apps, we don't have to keep monitoring them to uh, see if we need to add more resources every now and then. When it comes to the recovery part, again, cloud is built for high availability. Cloud has resiliency built into uh, all the layers of cloud and it can be very easy to recover from events. Uh, when there is something happens, we have to recover. Cloud makes it very easy. We can have backups in different locations. We can easily spin up new resources if one data center is down. And most of the cloud services, they provide very high availability. Uh, starting with, let's say, storage, for example. Almost every cloud provider has uh, five nines or six nines of availability. And these resources are highly, highly available and they make it very easy to recover from uh, situations which might uh, have a dump bank on the application. In the traditional apps, this is mostly a slow recovery process. We don't have the same amount of automation. We don't have the same amount of uh, agility or speed when it comes to the recovery. So with those things, we know that it is easy to build cloud native applications and uh, we should be moving towards cloud native in future. With that, I'm starting this series, which is the cloud native ninja series, where I want to start with the assumption that people going through this series, they don't know much about the cloud or they have very limited knowledge of the cloud. They might know bits and pieces. So I want to start with building and deploying an application and take it all the way from starting with code to the cloud deployment. Along the way, I will talk about various tools which are used for cloud native development. We will talk about best practices, how to build cloud native applications. Uh, if you want, you can also look at another series I did some time back, which is talking about 15 factor apps. And it talks about what are the different 15 factors we need to follow when we are building cloud native applications. So that would be one of the thing uh, which will be covered in detail and in practice not just theory as part of this series. We'll also talk about building portable applications which can be uh, built and tested on a local machine. It can be deployed to various environments like public cloud. It could be Azure, AWS, a private cloud or a PaaS platform like OpenShift or a hybrid and multi-cloud scenario. We will also make this application portable to run in serverless environment. We'll see how easy it is using containers to deploy the application on uh, serverless kind of infrastructure, not just the platform as a service or uh, cloud provider provided service or managed service, for example. We will also demonstrate the CI CD DevOps and GitOps practices, and we will implement observability feature. So join me on this journey uh, in building a small application, which will cover all these aspects. If you want to get started, and if you want to follow along, you can uh, have a look at this GitHub repository, which is named as Cloud Native Ninja. I pushed in a little bit of code at this moment, uh, but I want to start with setting up a developer machine and then uh, building this polyglot applications. So if you want to follow along, I'm building this on Windows and these are the list of softwares which I intend to use. Uh, Windows Terminal, Windows Subsystem for Linux, Docker Desktop, VS Code, IntelliJ, the Azure CLI, uh, Kubernetes uh, CTL, kubectl, command line tool, as well as Helm. And as we go along, we will add many more tools. Most of these tools are cross-platform. They just don't work on Windows. You can use the uh, version for your operating system or your laptop if you are on Mac or you are on Linux you will find the version of the software available. And as we go along, we will be doing things like building an application. We will containerize that application. Then we will uh, run it locally. We will also deploy it on Kubernetes, a local instance, as well as on cloud. We will do CI CD and we will see how to integrate with different cloud services. We will also look at infrastructure as code using uh, PowerShell and Terraform. And then we will look at the observability, GitOps, chaos engineering, multi-cloud deployment and things like that. You will see that in some places I have put needs help. 
So if you are an expert or you already know these things, you can clone this repo and you can contribute to this repository. Uh, if I don't find anybody who can help me, I will anyway pick up these topics. I will learn them and I will share them along with you. But if you decide to contribute, you will also get an opportunity to talk about it on my YouTube channel. And that could be a good way of sharing your knowledge with the rest of the community. So with that, I will conclude for now and look forward to the next part of this series where we will start diving into some of these aspects that I talked about in the objectives. Uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, you can go over to the uh, GitHub repo and the slides are published to the slide share and speaker deck. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to learn more about cloud native development and things around that, previously, as I talked about, I've done this series called as the 15 factor apps. You can start with that looking at what are the different 15 factors which are required for building applications which are portable and highly scalable resilient. Thanks for watching this video and I look forward to having you attend the other parts of the series. Thank you once again. Until next time, code with passion and strive for excellence.